Hi, it's Richard here from the Stiebel Hub. This is a freshly installed Windows 10. It's the final uh, preview version. I have downloaded the standard jar files for the Siebel client, the Siebel tools, and the Siebel sample. I have generated my uh, set of images using SNCC, and I have, just, I have run the Siebel client install using administrator rights, and I've made no other changes to this system apart from installing Java runtime version 1.7, uh, version 7, I beg your pardon. So uh, this is just a very brief video to show uh, my experience of working with Windows 10 and the installer. Um, provided you have an existing folder for the file system, uh, you don't really have to enter any of this to begin with. And the install ran without a single issue. Um, it took a long time, and thanks to the miracle of Hollywood, you'll be spared most of that. But it ran without a single issue. I repeat that because it is worthy of note. So the client installed successfully and I then continued to the next step for me which was installing the sample database. The sample database uses install shield and is generally very reliable if a little clunky and the same was true in Windows 10. The install was very rapid. I didn't even uh, run, run it with administrator rights. And it was just a case of waiting for the files to unzip and uh, be installed in the right location. I had to specify where my version of Siebel was installed, but that's hardly anything new, since it always seems to assume it's in some uh, default directory. And the installation proceeded as normal, slowly but effectively. And there's the installation complete. The third and final part, therefore, and probably the one that's least likely to cause us issues, is Siebel Tools. So since this, like the Siebel client, uses the OUI installer, I'll run it under admin rights. And as the Siebel client installer, there were absolutely no issues whatsoever installing Siebel tools. So I have to say, this part was positively painless. So once again, I've spared you most of that. The only amusing thing is the installer seemed to reach about 480% before it finished. Now comes the moment of truth, the fact that we need to make a few minor changes to our CFG files, for example, as documented in previous versions of the installation for self-study, such as the FQDN, um, but also, uh, if necessary, to readjust uh, CFGs as far as the location of the sample database is concerned. But our biggest challenge uh, comes down to the need to configure our shortcuts to work with a browser. Since the default browser in Windows 10 is, in fact, Microsoft Edge, the new browser, uh, this is going to cause a little bit of a problem because we're not able to use it with Siebel. Uh, it won't take very long to fix. In the meantime, you can see me adjusting CFG files, changing paths to the sample database and what have you. This is nothing new um, and is simply a case of making sure you're pointing to the right place. Making those couple of changes, Siebel tools, first boot, fingers crossed, here we go. Ah, sample started, executables up and running, and Siebel tools doesn't let us down. Enjoy it while it's there, ladies and gentlemen, it won't be there for much longer. Siebel tools in all of its slightly cranky Windows 3 robustness. So the next stage is of course to test drive the client. As I mentioned a moment ago, Microsoft Edge is the browser of choice. However, it is not a normal Windows app. It is now a, Win a, it is now a Windows app and not an application. So um, the executable um, can't be launched using a command line, which gives us a few challenges if you want to try and use it. Um, frankly, I think I've given up now. 
Um, I tried several methods which were using the documented command line which involves typing start and what have you uh, or uh, writing a piece of code to run it and creating my own executable. In none of those cases was I, fine, was I able to actually get Microsoft Edge to open Siebel uh, automatically using it as the command line choice. Um, so the simple solution to all of this is, is, is really to bypass trying to start Microsoft Edge as your browser. Um, in fact, bypass it altogether if you can. And changing the uh, command line of the shortcut in Windows 10 to point to Internet Explorer, which is also installed by default when you install Windows 10. Internet Explorer will prompt you to enable the plugin for Java and may also prompt you to adjust the settings of your browser. Being lazy, I chose recommended security settings and was quite astonished to see, apart from a useless page from Microsoft, that uh, Siebel Call Center started up first time quite happily. No issues there. Of course, once you've got it started in Internet Explorer, there's nothing to stop you uh, doing a cheeky start of Microsoft Edge and copying and pasting the short the URL that you've got from your browser into Microsoft Edge and having a little test drive round to see what it looks like under this new browser. And it looks surprisingly similar. So it must be said that all in all, uh, taking a brand new Windows 10 and installing the self-study guide, uh, following the self-study guide, required precious little modification, um, if only to make sure that you point to Internet Explorer um, or you choose Internet Explorer as your default browser uh, because Microsoft Edge uh, will not give you what you need for the thick client, for the developer web client or the mobile client of Siebel. Thank you very much for watching and keep your eyes peeled for more videos about Windows 10 and Siebel IP 2015. This is Richard signing off. See you next time. Bye-bye.